last season on Camp Bennett. <laughs> We're going to get after him. We're going to have the big eye in the sky, and it don't lie. I mean, them three guys right there, we can win the championship with him. We can win it 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 with him. You know about the running test? Uh, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I retract my statement, my earlier comment, about it not being that hard. <laughs> I guess it's true, man. We all brothers. When 2010 training camp came to a close, Coastal Carolina seemed to be a cohesive unit that was ready to return the Chanticleers to championship days. But another Big South title seemed unlikely early in the year. The Chanticleers are now 0-3 for the season. Georgia Southern beat the Shants 43-26 in CCU's home opener at Brooks Stadium last night. Trailing by just three points late in the game, Coastal imploded. 0-3 became 1-4, 1-4 became 2-5. The 2010 season was on the verge of becoming a lost cause. But suddenly, something happened, and the shots became one of the most dangerous teams in FCS football. From 8 yards for the win, Coastal Carolina gets a 30-27 win in overtime over Gardner-Webb as Zach McDowell delivers in the clutch. And the Shawna Clears close out the scoring with a Keon Cunningham 39-yard interception return. 31-3 is your final score. Coastal Carolina improves to 3-1 in Big South play. McDowell to Hazel a third time. This is an 11-yard touchdown. Coastal Carolina has a 38-17 lead at the half. And Coastal Carolina pulls off the upset, 45 to 31. The Shawna Clears upset number 11, Liberty. There he is, Trey oh, Henderson baby. take it to the house. 70 to 3 is the final score. Thanks to a three-way tiebreaker, Coastal was in the FCS playoffs for the second time in school history and Big South champs for the fourth time in eight years. CCU hosted its first ever postseason game, plagued by turnovers in a loss to Western Illinois. But the late season spark has the 2011 Shawna Clears anxious to get to work. I think with the way these guys came on the last half of the season, I think a lot of the excitement is there. On the eve of training camp, the veterans know what lies ahead. I'm looking forward to this camp. This is my, uh, my fourth one. Mm -hmm. It's my fourth camp, so I mean, I know the rules now. I know my freshman year was kind of hard. I went and didn't want to eat because I was scared I was going to throw <laughs> up. And, I had to try to go to sleep all I could, couldn't sleep at night, but now some of those camp butterflies gone. So I'm kind of like an old vet in the game now. So I want to show you our refrigerator. Get a close up on that, Rich. There ain't nobody doing it like us. We, we, got, got, some milk. we got the protein down there. We got some, we got some poor man steak right here. This is a poor man steak, a hot dog. <laughs> we got the muscle milk, we got the vitamins, we got the oranges, you know, we got everything. Kool Aid, got to have the purple Kool Aid. Only thing we got in our freezer? Baking soda. Baking soda, keep everything fresh. <laughs> and this right here, empty box anyway. <laughs> the players unwinded before the grind of camp. Defensive back Josh Norman spent time with his mom before she left town. I feel as if this is going to be um, one of the best years, you know, yet. And I know we're not going to be able to get back down here as often as we, you know, would like to. I ain't going to see my mom as much as I would like to. And um, and what we're doing down so far is it's going to be really intense. Oh my goodness. You definitely picking your feet up. <laughs> Putting your feet up and dropping them quick out here. <laughs> it's so hot. Woo hoo hoo. But nah though, um, I feel that like we should do some stuff out here though. I mean, running in the sand. Whew. Running back Jeremy Height is one of the favorites to fill the vacant starting spot at running back. 
but he was in deadliest catch gear thinking about catching fish instead of scoring touchdowns for just one more day in a friendly competition with defensive end Jamel Davis. So that guy went right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he got you, huh? Oh, man, I've been on the bait right there. No, it's not. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh. Hey, that was about to be on you, dog. Hey, that was a bass, too. I know. Hey. I already caught him. I just threw him back in there. Defense. Stanky legs. Whew. To be honest, I've been kind of sick of working, so working that job or whatever, so now it's time for football, the thing I love. So I'm like very excited. What was your job? Working on campus, cleaning porcelains. <laughs> is that the, is that, is that the uh, industry term? Yeah, that, that's the term, that's for people who don't understand that, so they can't laugh. <laughs> ah ha, woo, okay. Dang. Okay, Jamel. I think not. Uh oh. I think not. <laughs> Height had a big day. He hopes that a three fish day can turn into three touchdown games this fall. You may not catch something one day. Next day you might catch everything. I relate that to football, but you're going to spend a lot of time out there in the practice field. You might score one, you might not. But when you do, you're very excited. Oh, like that right there. He's very excited. But he just don't know he about to get eight. It's training camp number 36 for head coach David Bennett, his 10th at Coastal Carolina. For all of his strengths, there may be none better than his ability to motivate. We were picked third in the conference this year, so I mean, it's going to be turned up a little bit more. That's what I, I would think. I don't think he really like agree with that, I mean. Coach Ben just want to get he just want to get us fired up to come out and just get it done, and he know we can do it. He just wanted to just get it done. And it isn't the same old speech. On the eve of the first workouts, Bennett turned to the old West and his clothing style to send the message. Now you guys coming to this program seen ups and you seen downs. Last season you saw a slow start and you saw a strong finish, didn't you? And we wanted to keep on going. And at the conference meeting this year. That's all I heard about how we shouldn't have been the team to go to the playoffs. We were not the best team. That's all I kept hearing. That somebody else should have gone to the playoffs instead of us. So I want to ask every one of y'all that's sitting down, as this year goes on, you make a commitment, not only to yourself and your hometown and this great university, but these great seniors that are standing up before you. When you want to, hey, somebody wants to go partying, wants to go drinking, doing the wrong thing, I want you to think about this night, this visual tonight, of these seniors standing before you and making a commitment to one another. And I see her, and I say, thank you, dear Lord. That's my wife. She got them teal boots. Them teal boots at football games, guess what? Them boots is undefeated. Them boots is undefeated. Since she's been wearing them. Boy, I love when she puts on them boots. I said, well, I want to straighten up, suck that gut in a little bit. <laughs> I said, boy, I, that's my woman. You understand? Hey, her vision and her dream is to wear them teal boots in Frisco, Texas. You with me? In Frisco, Texas was right next to Dallas, Texas. Man, I love to wear jeans and boots. People look at me like, what are you wearing jeans and boots for? Let me tell you something, right around Old Reed County, there's some awesome people that wear jeans and boots. And we want to take them all to Frisco, Texas, you understand? That happens every day. That happens tonight when you go to bed. That happens when you go to a meet and you don't carry your cell phone. That happens when we had the running test. You find a way to make it. You find a way to keep your buddy from getting in trouble. You find a way to study and pass that class. You find a way to tell the truth and not lie. You find a way to do the right things for the right people. And let's complete the vision. Boy, I tell you what, I'd be mighty proud, mighty proud to be in Frisco, Texas, sporting this lady right here on my arm in my jeans and boots. You understand? And I'll take her and we'll walk right down and be as proud as anybody. <laughs>
Mr. and Mrs. Bennett walked off into the sunset. A 5 a.m. wake-up call is on the horizon. Camp Bennett, all access at CCU Training Camp, is brought to you with limited commercial interruption from the Britton Law Firm. A special thanks to Tommy Britton and his partners, Mary Madison Britton Langway, Preston Britton, and Case Britton, for their support of Coastal Carolina football. Hello, I'm Tommy Britton. Along with my children, Case, Preston, and Mary Madison, I practice law here in Myrtle Beach. We're now known as the Britton Law Firm. We're all graduates of Walford College, but we're great supporters of David Bennett, Coastal Carolina football, and the great university Coastal Carolina has become. It's been a pleasure over the years to sponsor this program, the Britton Law Firm, all claims, trials in all courts. This episode of Camp Bennett is brought to you with limited commercial interruption from C.L. Benton and Sons and Osprey Marina. The Benton family hopes you enjoy the season at James C. Benton Field at Brook Stadium. Thanks to the Benton family for supporting the Coastal Carolina football program. Yeah, it's about that time, family. <laughs> Why everybody looks so sad, man? It's just running. Well, we, the freshmen are in second session, so we got to do uh, the running test a little early, 6 a.m., get them up, rise and shine. And the beautiful thing is it's a little cooler at 6 a.m. It's only 80. So uh, hopefully they should do better. I feel a little breeze coming from the ocean. We're about to find out who's been working and who has not been working. No. Where's the prediction? Okay. For me? Yeah. On what? On me. Well, you making it? I mean, 50 50. 50 50 right now. Y'all need a smile on your face this morning, not a frown. Hey, isn't it beautiful? Tell him, John. Coach Brown back in the day, 95, 96, in there, did they? That's a little bit different. That's, one of these six. That's before my time, Coach. That's before all this legislation to protect you guys. Every CCU camp starts with the running test. Players have either five or ten half gassers. That's up the field and back with 60 second breaks. Each position has a time they need to hit. Miss one, and it's another 6 a.m. date of extra running. Go. Hey, look here. Three or four more. You guys cannot run enough. 16, 17, go. Good job, good job, combo. What do you got? Three more. Three more. Terrence Jennerette was a WPDE all-zoner from Carver's Bay High. The defensive lineman was about to have his welcome to college football moment. Jennerette, the moment of truth. We're going to be out here every day. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He almost fell Because he's wasting a lot of energy jiggling. This ain't toast at a coast, son. That's nine seconds. We do it at Carver's Bay, but I forget. This ain't high school no more, this college. So, you know, I just have to get better, go ahead and pass it, get out of the way. It's a whole new world right now <laughs> on the college level. So many people adapt themselves, and they do it day in and day out. I do the same thing in high school, but now I'm on the college level. I have to do it 24-7, 365, in order to keep up with these guys. So, the practices, they just, it's two different levels. On one level, I felt like an all-star. On this level right now, I feel like a young rookie, like a little brother in the family. People keep slapping on him. Coach said 50-50. What are you putting the odds at? 100%. 100%, I'm going to pass that running test. 100%. Stand up, man. Stand up. Stand up, Matt. Get up. Stand up, Matt. Stand up. Stand up, Matt. Stand up. 100%. 100%, baby. I told you. Dexter Holman thought his prediction came true, but he missed touching the line on a few of his runs. A few inches here and there caused him to fail. Defensive line coach Jamel Smith set the tone early about attention to detail. There is no shortcuts to a national championship. Um, it's going to take hard work. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take um, motivation, and it's going to take... Uh, just self-discipline and you know when you take care of the little things and all and um, like touching the line and running through the line and finishing it's the same thing you know with touching the line and finishing through the line is the same thing that happens on the football field too I made them baby 
may come back tomorrow. With 95 players in camp, 81 received passing marks. For 14 shot of clears, they lost two hours of sleep on Friday morning. You guys that are hurting over here at the running test, we might have to replace you in the 95 count. I'm sorry. If you didn't work hard to be in shape to report today, you were not doing what you needed to do. You understand? As simple as that. Big vision. I think our trainer said it best, Jeff Pounds. He said, you can't be a part-time worker and be a full-time player. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. No, it don't. And y'all guys are finding out. Your way don't work. You got to work together. It's hard to do it alone, guys. You got to train together. All right? This year's motto is stay hungry. Graduate with a 3-0 and you're a student athlete. Oh my goodness. You think companies want to hire you? You think they want to hire you? Yeah, they do, because most people running companies, guess what they are? Former athletes that busted their tail and knows what it takes to be great. Hey, have y'all ever seen the size of those national championship rings? Have y'all ever seen one? They're unbelievable. <coughs> unbelievable. But you got to work to get it. They don't just hand them suckers out. One team in the nation out of 120. One team out of 120 going to get that ring. Those of you that ain't run hard enough, let's work harder in the morning to get that ring. Because you ain't done enough. I'm sorry. You know, you look, You got to look in the mirror. You know what you're doing. You know if you've done enough. And like I told you, Terrence, hey, everybody's pretty good in high school, son. This ain't high school. Every day during camp, an 11 a.m. staff meeting goes over the day-to-day -day grind and everything that needs to be done on and off the field. Prior to the first practice, Coach Bennett is preaching togetherness. It ain't offense versus defense. You don't need to cultivate that. You understand? It needs to be us with us. And if, a, you know, no cheap shots, we don't need offense, defense fighting. We need, hey, if an offensive guy knocks the crap out of an, a defensive guy, help him up and say, hey, man, and vice versa. If a defensive guy comes up and waylays a, a running back, whatever, hey, help him up. And that's, that, that's how we can be the best we can be. Not trying to go against each other. You do that, you're very, very, very narrow-minded. You better check yourself in the mirror. Last time I checked, when we go out there, it's Coastal Carolina University. It ain't the corners versus the wideouts. It ain't the safeties versus the tight ends. It ain't nobody versus nobody. It's the, how, hey, them guys loving each other up and being the best we can be and working hard to get each other better. Not trying to say, when, when, hey, when are you going to take the hat off them quarterbacks? When, you gonna, you, when we play firm, you, you're going to get hit every, any quarterback you want, hard as you want. We got to get these horses to the race, baby. We got to get them in the gates. Get them going. The players couldn't wait to hit the practice field for the first workout of camp, despite sweltering heat and humidity. But before stretching began, rumblings in the clouds brought the players off the field. We hear the thunder, but we don't see no light. The Chanticleers never got out as the rains poured down. Some groups had a little downtime. Others jumped right into mastering the playbook and simulating drills in Atkins Fieldhouse. Practice number one would have to wait one more day. If you recall from yesterday, uh, this guy right here Dick, said 100%. Dexter, did you say that yesterday morning? I did. I said 100%. But you know. Well, this is day two of the running camp which means he failed, didn't get 100%. Would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, you know, yeah, you know, I didn't do the little things, didn't touch the line, you know, so I'm out here again, trying to get my 100%, I guess the second time. <laughs> I was pretty mad, you know, because I had worked hard all, uh, all off season, so, you know, to fail, when you worked hard all year, just, it hurts inside. Let's get it in today. Get your minds on it. Get it right. Come on, man. Do this thing. Let's go. Get it over with. Dexter Holman took care of business and touched every single line to get the passing mark he thought he had the day before. He responded in a positive way. Um, you know, he was very respectful. He's determined. He's motivated. And um, But, you know, that's just only one day. One of the lasting images of season one at Camp Bennett was Chesterfield's Moon Edwards struggles in the conditioning test in his baptism by fire to the world of college football. Fast forward one year, and the redshirt freshman was reliving the nightmare. We'll get that money to somebody else, baby. We got some other people who want that scholarship. 
Good job, Austin. Anybody want a scholarship? I can vouch for anybody and say that, you know, you can practice hard, you can go 100% the whole practice, but when it comes down to running, it's just it's just a different win. You just got to know how to maintain that air and, that, and just keep breathing, but it's a totally different win, and that's just how it's been since I've been starting playing football, and I just haven't been a good runner, but as far as game, my coach can tell you, they'll tell you in practice here, like, I go 100% the whole time. And I'm just, I try to be a bulldozer the whole time, but it's just, it's, it's a different ball game when it comes down to conditioning, playing, and practice. It's three different things. But at some point here, you're probably going to become a runner, aren't you? I hope so, yes, sir. Like, I still got three more years here, and I'm going to keep busting, 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 and try to be the best I can be for my coaches, for myself, for my hometown. I just want to be the best I can be overall. For those who pass, very good. For those who pass, you could have given that effort yesterday and been done with, not up. Sleeping right now, getting ready to lift at 9. For those who fail, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning is going to come early. Got it? Get your bodies right because we're going to run again this afternoon. Let's go. Let's get, let's get, let's get, about, let's get our mentals right. Hard work on three, hard work on three. One, two, three, hard work. Let's go. Hey, go get showered, go get food in you. 14 CCU players were at day two of conditioning. Eight more are back in bed on Saturday morning with passing grades. Moon Edwards said he would run every day at 6 a.m. until he met his ultimate goal. He did that on Saturday morning. Third time was the charm. This episode of Camp Bennett is being brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Creek Rats in Merle's Inlet. A special thanks to Creek Rats for being a sponsor of the David Bennett Show for the past eight years. Great view, great food, the coldest drinks, and great beach music with the Band of Oz at Creek Rats in Merle's Inlet. Bring your lawn chairs and magic slippers for the Band of Oz, Sunday, August 14th. Summer concert series at Creek Rats Merle's Inlet, sponsored by Crescent Bank. Carolina football season tickets are on sale now. The Shana Clears are set to defend their Big South Championship, but we need your support. We've got a ticket package to fit any budget. Don't miss head coach David Bennett and the Shana Clears as they open the season September 3rd against in-state rival Furman. Season tickets on sale now. Call the Shana Clear ticket office at 347 ticks or log on to GoCCUSports.com. Make it shot to clear. You support Coastal Carolina football. Curtis Walker is Coastal Carolina's defensive coordinator. He brings back a unit that returns nearly every key player. On top of that, there's more star power from two comeback stories. Derek Frazier spent three years as a stellar student athlete. A starting linebacker and a computer science major with a 3.0 GPA, Frazier faltered during a finals week and was academically ineligible for the 2010 season. I had response to take care of um, responsibility to take care of uh, my family because I had a situation going on with them, which kind of brought me down a little bit. Um, it was a lot of stress, especially when I had to take six finals um, during finals week and having all that stress on my shoulders. It was it was it was very tough. And um, um, I, I made through most of them. Um, I passed five of my uh, five of my finals, but didn't pass one, failed it by one point. And that made me academic, academically ineligible. Um, one point. One point. Once I find out I couldn't play, it's just like, like I didn't do anything for a whole year, like nothing. I didn't like came to my room, study. That's all I did. If I wasn't at the, uh, if I wasn't at the um, Coastal Science Center, I was here. I didn't go out, didn't do anything, didn't movies, nothing. I just couldn't do anything. It's almost like I was kind of depressed, almost because I couldn't play. I have so much stuff built up right now. It's just, I'm just ready to let it go. Quinton Davis was one of the ringleaders of the Shant's defense until a devastating injury ended his season in week three against Georgia Southern. After a long and intense rehab, Davis is back and hungry to get back with the defense. I told I told my ligaments in my ankle, like pretty much all of them, all, the, all three main ones. Uh, and what happened was uh, I got cut, a uh, helmet hit me direct in, directly in my ankle, made me fly in the air. And uh, <laughs> pretty much it just, tore, it just tore my ankle up. I know I have to work just as much as hard as they have worked while I was gone to get back where I was and farther than what I could be and contribute to this team and to this defense as much as I can. Day three was a lot like the day before. Coastal had their eye on the sky and watched storms roll into campus. I'm <laughs> kind of upset. I'm ready to get this camp started. You know, that's, that's just all it is to it. Let's just get it rolling one day at a time. You know, if it don't happen today, 
It's going to happen one day and we're going to get it rolling. The players were beyond anxious. After some horsing around, something happened in the coastal locker room. The defense didn't want to wait for the rain to end. With no coaches around, the CCUD decided to start practice in the middle of the locker room. We try to get some extra work in. We have some goals to be, goals and aspir high aspirations to be uh, top 10 defense in the nation. So whatever we got to do, even though it's bad weather outside, we got to get some work in somehow. That's what great teams are made of, is leaders that coaches aren't saying it constantly. And so very proud of some of our young men for taking the initiative to not waste time, even though we're sitting around here and Again, the good Lord's teaching us patience for this first practice. We got a lot of coaches. Those are the coaches right here. We know the we, we know the plays. We know what we're supposed to do. We, we are the coaches now. The Shauna Clears called an audible and used the CCU baseball team's indoor practice facility to create a 40-yard practice field, and finally got their first practice in. They say patience is a virtue. It's required to follow the path back onto the gridiron. It takes patience to come back from an injury. Impatience can prevent you from hauling in the top prize. For a football team, patience is a good trait to have. With my HTC wireless phone, I'm always connected to the world around me. Whether it's simple everyday things like a call from a friend, a text from my daughter, or even an update to my Facebook status while I'm out and about, HTC connects me with the things that mean the most. HTC is your wireless headquarters for back to school. Get three months of HTC residential high-speed internet free with new HTC wireless service. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. Great view, great food, the coldest drinks, and great beach music with the Band of Oz at Creek Rats and Merle's Inlet. Bring your lawn chairs and matching slippers for the Band of Oz, Sunday, August 14th. Summer concert series at Creek Rats Merle's Inlet, sponsored by Crescent Bank. Hi, we're the offensive line. Here's what's coming up next week on Camp Bennett. I don't care what kind of shape you're in. When you put that helmet on, it's a whole nother story. I got to find out who it is. We need to find out probably the first 10 practices what my kind of goal in the back of my mind is. So that gives us a couple weeks to prepare for that first game. Fat hunt! Win, Pookie, win, Pookie! Yeah! Can't hear you, Ross. Sounding kind of quiet. Some quarterback got to be a loud leader. Pull your britches up, son. You ate them grilled chicken sandwiches and fruit this summer, didn't you, rather than the fried chicken sandwiches at Chick-fil-A? All mandarin oranges. There we go. Bam. Touchdown, Jeremy Hyde. Touchdown. You, you see it. it. You see it. You got to kiss him. Kiss him. Bam. This has been a presentation of WPDE Sports. For more local sports, log on to carolinalive.com.